Hello and welcome. My name is Javier Rivera and today in our DTF series we're going to be talking about how to set up your printer on Catlink. So I've been receiving some um, comments and some questions about how to set up your printer on Catlink. So I'm going to try to do a very quick video. I'm trying to do something simple, easy to follow that you guys can see uh, your normal settings and what things you want to look for real quick to set up cat link and what they what they do um this is going to be a bigger topic eventually um i know that you guys are going to have a lot of questions on a lot of other functions on cat link and i know that if eventually it's going to evolve but i just want to do something real quick so you guys can see and start printing right away so without further ado let's go ahead let's get started All right, guys, so the first thing that we want to make sure is that we have the correct drivers installed. OK, so <clears throat> I have a couple of things here messed up on purpose. Um, I'm not going to do the whole driver thing. Um, that should be pretty, pretty simple and explanatory. OK, but what we're going to do is um, let's go to printers and scanners. OK. And let's find um, for an example, let's grab this uh, XP series, right? And we're going to go to manage and we're going to go to print in preferences. Now, if you see a window that looks like this, you do not have the drivers installed. OK, um, your window should now be looking like this. Now, what you want to do is you're going to go to the Epson website. OK, um, you're going to actually let me let's just go here. You're going to go to support. You're going to go to printers. OK, you're going to. Let's do an XP 15,000 is the same for the ET 8550. Okay. Um, and we're going to go to our downloads drivers, utility combo package installer. We're going to install that. Okay. And then we're going to follow the instructions. Now I'm not going to go too much into it. That, that should be pretty simple. Um, what I'm trying to show you guys. And the reason why is um, when you go here to printers and, and scanners, um, these are not these you're not going to use these printers to print per se okay when you when you install your printer on catlink or at least on catlink okay um it's going to create these files you see these that say at like xm xp 15000 dtf v2 or the et8550 dtf v2 that's the actual printer that the rip software is going to use to send the print okay but the reason why we want these and i'll, I'll show you with this one with the 2850 um the reason why is you want to go to maintenance you want to go to extended settings and see this one has the drivers because you see all their options when you see and this is on all Epson's, okay? They might be some other options that are not available for your printer, or depending on the model, but this is Epson, okay? Um, when you go to maintenance, extend the settings. In here, you have to uncheck the Epson status monitor. So what this is doing is Epson is, is every time that you're printing, your printer is talking back to this software and it's talking back and forth, okay? And it's doing it to check your ink levels, any faults, any issues like that um, for your queue when you're printing. The problem is um, because you're gonna send a print to this printer, okay? Epson here is gonna be monitoring this printer and it's gonna be thinking, well, this printer is printing right now, even though I'm not telling it to print. So stop. And what it's going to do is it's going to stop your prints midway. So that's why I'm, I'm saying make sure that your printer, um, your drivers are installed correctly. OK, now let's go ahead and open Catlink. OK, and the first thing that we're going to do in here, we're going to go to devices, manage devices. And we're going to click add. OK, now in here, we're going to find a printer that we're looking for. OK, you're not going to see it on here because I already have it installed. But in here, you're going to see either the XP 15000 or you're going to see the ET 1500. So you're going to click on it. You're going to click OK. I suggest using the version two because that's going to be the latest um, uh, software. OK. So you're going to click OK. In my case, I'm going to cancel it, but you want to click OK. And it's going to bring this printer here. Now your drivers are installed into Catlink. OK, so we're going to close. You need to make sure that you have it again. I have to because I use both of them. But in here, you're going to see the XP 15000. OK, after we have that device installed, OK, we're going to manage our queues. So you're going to go to your queue, manage your queue. 
okay and you're going to add and in here again you're going to see both okay but i'll give you an example so you got to have the xp 15000 okay and we're going to pick the port so usually you should be able to see this port um on your printer on their printer properties but i'm just going to pick usb1 because that's the one i'm using okay and then you click install on this one for me it will be removed because i have it installed already once you install that your printer's installed. Um, at the moment you click install in here, what it's going to do is going to create this XP15000 DTF version 2. And that's what it's going to be using. That's the printer that, the, that your DTF is going to use to actually um, layer that white on top of everything. Okay. Now, very briefly, um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things here on Catlink. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, let me see. Let's go to properties. Okay, and I'm just gonna go through a couple of settings, okay, very quickly, okay. Um, let's see, the media setup, okay. I like to put it at 13 by 19. Um, you can make a custom uh, media, you can make it for raw media if you want to. So I have it on fixed media, which pretty much is, um, is your sheet, okay, 13 by 19. Or you can go to raw. Um, I, I don't suggest that to start that. I think that's a little more advanced. Um, so let's start with fixed media. We're going to do our 13 by 19. Okay. If you don't have the size, you can add it. Um, you can also um, change this to instead of 19, you can do it 17 uh, or 17 and a half. That way you always leave room. Um, so you don't ruin your print. You can do that. Okay. Um, layout manager. Let me see. I'll always put a um, mirror job on import. That way, when you pr bring the image into here into Catlink, it will automatically um, mirror the job and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, that's one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Roughly layer profile in here. Um, these are settings that you want to check. So flood level, if you see, I have mine on 175 right now. Um, recommended is 255 to start. So flood level, what it is, is pretty much how thick your DTF is going to be. So think about it this way. If you, if you 255, um, it might be so thick, but remember, because it's so liquidy, it might, it might just like spread all over the page and it's, it's you, you risk, um, ruin the print or you're, you're putting too much ink in it. So I suggest starting with the 255 and throw it down until you find what is your happy medium. For me, it's 175. That could be too thin because that all goes with the printer. Um, 250, 180s, it, it, it's, you have, you're going to have to play with this. But what flood level means is how much of how much paint you're, you're putting in there, how thick your coat of paint it's in, okay? Um, processing options, okay? Your underbase, it, that has to be highlighted. I'm doing 60% of white under black. Okay, so I want you to understand this setting. What this means is behind your black, how much white you're going to put as an underbase, okay? Um, a good, good, happy medium will be 70%. That's what I recommend. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of dark shirts lately, so I'm not going to go ahead and put too much white if I'm printing on a, on a black shirt, um, if I'm going to put something on a black shirt. So uh, 70 is a good start, Okay. Now, maximum ink, this is the white ink, okay? Now, what that white ink means is um, how strong you want the white when you're using white as letters. Not for your, your background, not for your under base, but if you're going to do white letters, okay, how, how strong you want that white to be, okay? Okay. Um, I have it on 60 right now because I haven't been doing a lot of it, but I recommend like an 85. That is a really good start. Okay. And then this choke the prime stop is pretty much how close you want your white from the edge of your, of your design. Okay. So if your design, I usually leave it on four. Um, it is, it's like right at the edge. I'm not even too far in or too far out. Um, that's what I like. Um, these in here, they're for more expert. Um, I, I will stay, I will stay away from that until you really start playing around with it. Knock me black out. What this is going to do is it's going to remove all the black dots when you import the page. 
okay? Or the, the you know, the white me out, the same thing. Um, it's going to remove all the white. You do that to create transparency effects on black. So if you're going to, if you're going to be applying your print into a black shirt, you really don't need to print black. So what you do is you use the, you click in here, the black me out. And then when you import that image, it's going to remove the black depending on your settings. Um, I recommend just, just playing around with this because um, it takes a while to get used to it. Okay. So let's go to printer options. This, this is where you're going to get into how um, I always keep it on 64. That is, that is the, the, that's what I use. This is how much you want to print, how good your quality, your, you know, your high quality, low quality and all that stuff. If you go to, you know, um, 32 nozzles, that's pretty much low quality, 90 nozzles. That is the high quality. I'll stay on 64. I do the rear paper feed. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is your profiles for colors. I keep the stock ones. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, this is for the costing and the login. You don't need to that to start. Um, again, I'm just trying to get you guys to, to learn how to, how to start. So that will be my start that those are the settings that I will use to start. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to try to prep an image as fast as I can, cause I don't have a lot of time. So let's go to head. Let's go to open. Um, I'm going to go, let me see where I have this. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do an image real quick, um, as fast as I can, because I don't have a lot of time. So let's go to open. Let's just pick just a random image real quick to process it. I'm using GIMP because I really like to use this program. I'm going to grab my um, selecting tool. I'm going to go ahead. And now if you look also, um, I have in here draw mask, because if you don't do, you don't know what you're really grabbing or not. So I do draw mask that way it goes pink and I know how close I can get. So let's go here. Let's do, um, let's just back down hold up. here, delete here, get a little closer on those lines, delete that. Um, and again, you can, you can, you can really work this image as much as you want. Delete that. I don't like it. There's, there's still white in here. That's going to look pretty awful. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm clicking and selecting it and then, um, and then I'm moving either right or left until I see how much I want to remove. And, um, let's just say that's the image again, again, I don't like it. There's, you still got to like work that image real quick, but I don't have a lot of time. So let's do that. Um, you want to go ahead and, uh, let's do edit. So you want to make sure your canvas size is good. You can always either, you know, make it smaller, bigger or whatever. Um, you can also resize your image so you can go here. Yeah, scale image. Okay. And then let's say inches. I want this to be eight inches wide scale it. <clears throat> now I'm going to export it. Okay. And we're going to save this as a PNG. Okay. Um, I'm going to just leave it on my documents or, you know, just to make it easy. Okay. Um, you can pick your file. Um, and now we're going to export now one key thing in here when it's going to export. Okay. Save background color. Make sure that that is, um, you know, that's, that's removed. Export. All right. Now we're going to our cat link. We're going to go here or here. And we had that on my documents and it was a flower um, PNG right here. And there we have it. Um, so it already, you know, I already removed everything. A lot of things that you can do in here. Um, let me go ahead and move it so you guys can see a little bit. <clears throat> so a lot of couple of things that I can do. Let's say that, uh, this is, this is for, I'm doing a shirt. Um, I want this to be 10 inches 
um, by seven, okay? Now, what I wanna do in here is I wanna create a duplicate. I wanna do in the dependent copy, okay? Now this independent copy, it's not gonna be mirror, okay? So I need to make sure that I mirror this image. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do, 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 do. where is it, where is it? Nah, let's do here. Modify. Uh, this one is mirror. The new one is not mirror. Oh, they're actually, they're both. Okay, cool. Um, I'm usually very careful because sometimes on your duplicates, they don't mirror. So you got to be careful with that. Um, now this one, I can actually go ahead and make it like a four and a half. Okay. And then that is my front logo and I'll have my top logo and then I can go ahead and I'll give you an example. Another thing that I can do, I can go ahead. Let's. Uh, if I'm really going to do this and try to get everything out of my picture, so I'm going to go ahead and here and modify. I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a copy. Uh, I can't do it. It's too big. No rotation. Make a copy. There you go. Then let's go here. Automatic nesting. And now let's bring everything into one page. And then I'm gonna go here and create copies of this one. So now in here, um, I'm also going to change my spacing, okay? I am going to make sure that it's on the middle. In here, this one's pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that it's on the middle. And right now, that image, it's I like it. Um, you know, if I am ready and this is what I want, in here I can get a back logo, a front logo, back logo, front logo. So I can get two t-shirts out of this one. I'm just throwing you an example. You know your sizes. You know what you're doing. Now I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to rip only. Okay. It's going to spool it. And now that, that image is ready. So now all I got to do is go here and I'm going to print. That's it. Um, I can say how many copies I want. Okay. You can also do it here if you want three copies, four copies, anything, and you can click print. So that image now is ready to be printed. You're good to go. Um, All right, guys. So there you have it. That's pretty much how to set up your printer. It is the same process for any that any Epson printer that you're going to be using Catlink uh, with. Okay. So hopefully this helped you. This hopefully this can get you guys up and running uh, right away and get you up and printing. So anyway, if you have any questions, leave it on the comments. If you like my video, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And always thank you for watching.